but our mortgage did get declined. Hello bestie and welcome back to the channel. We've got a very exciting topic to talk about today and one that I have just been dying to just like go into the topic of on this channel. At last we can talk about the fact that we have brought our first house. If you have like watched the vlogs and you've been keeping up then you'll know it's a huge project. It's our first house that we're gonna be living in. So there's a lot of work to do before we can move in, but it's just been, like I've learned so much from this whole experience and it seems like we've had such a unique experience. And I do feel like when you are going into the house buying process, as much as you can listen to like, you can never get enough information is what I'm trying to tell. Like everyone's situation and everyone's experience and journey is going to be so different. Like it, it's so different for everyone. But we had such a unique journey and I learned so much and I feel like I've like gained a lot of knowledge and I feel like if you guys are going into this journey for the first time or maybe just the second time or whatever or if it's like, you know, buying a house is such an achievement and it's really daunting. Like you... you you don't get taught this at school so if i can help you guys just you know i've asked for your questions on instagram and you've sent in so many and i've like gone through them all and sort of like grouped them and i've put like i've been working on this for a couple of weeks i didn't want to like just say the answers here and now because sometimes then when you're editing you're like oh no i should have said this and that so i've really tried to like write down as much as i possibly can first thing before we get into it we're gonna go and grab a coffee obviously i'm pulled outside costa so i'm just gonna run in and get myself a coffee and then i thought we could just have like a big chat about like going in for a mortgage whether like we're both self-employed so that was something new um the actual house buying process via solicitors like the reno topic we're just going to talk about it all in this video and then i thought this can just be like a really easy go to like frequently asked questions we're going to talk about it all in this video so let me go and run and get a coffee and then i'll be back okay right i grabbed myself an iced caramel latte and croissant breakfast of queens okay i'm going to talk about sort of like the step one so this is going to be all questions to do with like saving and um, different accounts like how we personally set budgets and things so tips for saving for a deposit slash like saving well i would always say set a month like what are you getting in a month both of you if you're buying with someone else your boyfriend your girlfriend or if you're buying on your own then what are you getting in on like a sole income yourself and then i would work out a budget so okay right i'm getting an x amount of money every month i'm gonna this is my goal i would also say like have a little look at houses so that you know what you're playing with like don't get too focused on it because the market's crazy and it changes so much what you want to save for is going to be different if it's for your forever home or if it's just for like a starter home so i would get an idea and then i would set yourself a monthly budget and you've just got to stick to it like it's as hard as or easy as like you want to sort of make it something that some people do which we didn't but it would have been a good idea like live off one person's wage and save the others if that's feasible for you like and then the other person's money just goes straight into a savings account and you don't even touch it and then you both just live off the other person's money which could be good and what i personally do is have a standing order so every month no matter what a certain amount of money goes from my current account into a savings account and i'm just going to keep that rolling because i do feel like it's nice to have that like saving security fund and then i always knew no matter what a month whether there was money left at the end of the month that i could save on top of it that money was going to be saved did we both have ices we did however this is me being completely transparent because i inherited my dad's house like you lose obviously the right to that because you've already got a property you only can get a like you can only get the benefit of a help to buy ice if it's the first house in your name so if i would have brought a house before my dad passed away then yeah i would have got the extra 25 percent, but we didn't um so i still have the actual account and i still put money in it but i would never actually get like the the benefit which like i completely understand as to why good reno budget i would honestly say it completely depends on the house and it also depends on whether you need to outsource the work or whether you can do a lot of the work yourselves like me and ollie are just well ollie mainly is going to do a lot of the work it, it, it completely depends like do you need a new bathroom a new kitchen do you need everything new like we do or is it just like a little like right now i think it really depends it's so hard to say and it's also hard because if it's going to be like your forever home then you're gonna probably want like the best quality kitchen the best quality bathroom whereas like this isn't going to be our forever home so that's not like we're not going to be getting the best of the best it's just like good quality gonna last but you know did we get a good price due to the work needed yeah we did get a very good price for the house like that's just been completely transparent it obviously has been really neglected like essentially the whole house 
needed to be gutted and redone and rebuilt so yeah we got a very good price and that's why we really stayed i'll go into it a little bit more but if you guys have watched the vlogs you'll know it took us nearly a year to get the keys and we really stayed with the house because we could never find anything comparable right sorry i'm going to move on to the next topic which is going to be more like about the actual like looking for a house i've tried to like group them together as much as possible so if you guys ever want to revisit it you can so some must-haves that we looked for i feel like we just really wanted a house that had potential we we did have some must-haves like we really wanted what we thought we wanted we didn't actually ever go but when we viewed it we never actually liked it like we probably viewed upwards of like 30 houses and because well like, we've been looking for so many long like for so many years like so long um i don't know you have to have a balance like you must have or must haves for a reason but i would also say when you see the house that you want it goes out the window but i'd also say don't ignore them like don't be in like a I'm just so desperate to find a house, so I'm just going to ignore my must-haves. Personally, for me, my must-haves were just going to be, like, I didn't want to have... I didn't want to outgrow the house really quick. Like, I wanted to have enough room. Like, I liked the idea of having a dining room. Like, that was one of the big things for me, because I'm such, like, a... I'm such a cook, and I'm such a... Let's get the family around and have dinner. So, like, a dining room was really important for me. Um, But then on the flip, we were, like, quite on having a drive and a garage the house doesn't have one but we just was like you know what we're gonna make the sacrifice because the rest of the house did meet our must-haves i feel like it's definitely like a compromise and that's what it's really about like obviously between you as well like if you are buying with someone else it's a compromise like there's some houses that i loved and i was like i want that house and i'll be like i don't like it and vice versa there was other houses that he would have been happy to buy and i was like no i don't really get the best vibe from that like i don't really want it how many bedrooms does your house have so it's a three bedrooms which again that was like quite an important thing for us because we knew that we would probably grow out of a two-bedroomed house quite quickly so i'm so glad that it's a three bed because it just gives us that space like, i'm not saying that we are going to have kids in the next two years but if we do like we're going to have room to do that and we're not going to feel like we've just outgrown it what are your favorite property viewing websites okay right i've got two places for you to look at right move for actually searching for the house I don't know why, right movie is just always where I personally looked. It's really easy. Get the app, go on it online. And you can also set like alerts, which is really good. And I would also say, ring your local estate agents, give them your criteria. So give them like a rough budget. You know, it doesn't have to be exact because quite often houses will go for less or more than what they're up for. So give them a rough budget of what you're looking for in terms of location, price, whether you want a project or not how many bedrooms and then get them to put you on their list and then whenever they get a house that meets that criteria they'll send you it and then that's really useful too and then what i personally then would do if i ever saw one that i liked i would then go on to zoopla and then i would type in the postcode or the road name and i would find it on there and then i would look for what zoopla actually um what's the word like not appraises that's american values sorry i would then see what zoopla values the house at and then that's really interesting because you can see what houses in the local area went for so if like for us obviously ours is a project we could look at how much the house is valued at on zoopla and then we could look at houses in the street that have sold within the last six months or year or two years or whatever you can also see like how much the price has increased and decreased which is also really like good so that i would say that that gives you like a good idea of the area and the potential and like for us we would love to rent it out in the future so like that's really useful it gives you an estimated rental income as well so yeah i'd say zoopla and right move but also get on your local estate agents because that's like an underrated thing that no one really ever told me and it wasn't until i'd actually gone because some people i guess work with an estate agent so like they'll say i'm looking for this so i guess they would but I always did it myself so it wasn't until i was at a viewing one time and then we didn't like the house that someone said to me do you want us to put you on our list and i was like oh i was like you do that so then i like said to all of them like would you please add me have you ever considered buying an auction and funnily enough the house that we brought was originally up for auction i don't know whether i'd ever like go to the auction house like maybe in the future when i had like a bit more confidence in it and 
bit more experience but i don't think i'd ever buy from auction like you know when you just like go to the auction and you're just like yeah yeah like i don't think i'd ever do that maybe in the future like like i said like when we had a bit more like security and stuff so yeah i would and i guess we did but our house was up for auction but then it was took off the auction so we just brought it like normally we didn't have to do any of that like non-refundable stuff we just brought it as a normal house okay any tips for first-time buyers my biggest tip would be get a survey surveys are really good at bringing to light any hidden issues you can get different levels they do like a level one which i don't really think is worth it that's similar to like a mortgage um valuation level two it's a little bit more in depth level three they literally go around the whole house and i will say disclaimer we paid about 800 pound for this and that obviously like that house could have been took away from us at this point but our house obviously was in such a bad state that we were like we need to know this full picture like we need to know if there's any issues in anywhere of the house so like we can then build like a plan of how to fix them and how to go about it and then also like do we want to take on all that work we paid we got it done i was really happy with it he sends well they sent me i went for like our i think it was like rssa it's like just like the england england like chartered um surveyors paid about 800 pound he spent the whole day there there has still been a few issues that have cropped up that weren't said in the survey however the main ones were picked up but it just does give you a good idea no one really says to you like you should get a survey like no one really does that because it is purely to protect you as the buyer it's worth the money in my opinion especially if you're buying like an old house that is in a bad way because it just gives you a bigger picture like i think it's worth the 800 pound in my opinion and i would also say keep chasing your solicitors don't feel like a burden and don't feel like embarrassed or annoying to keep emailing them or even calling them and saying like what's the update what's the update because in my experience like my solicitor has always been really good i've used her twice now and then i my brother used her as well and she is really good like i give her credit she's brilliant however solicitors especially don't have the best reputation i don't think to be they're not always on it sometimes it's like oh yeah like i'll do that and then it's like right well you are actually paying them for a service so don't feel like annoying like they are essentially working for you to do this for you so i would say keep chasing them send them a weekly email hello can i please be updated with the progress you've made this week or you know what are we hoping to have achieved by the end of the week just so that you know because there's nothing worse than sitting back and everyone saying to you what's going on what's the update is there any update and you're like no and like you haven't chased and you're sort of like i don't know like there's been so many occasions where i've been like tempted to not chase because I wanted to be annoying and as soon as I chased progress was made instantly and I thought gosh if I hadn't have said anything that probably would never have happened so did I have an additional survey yes I'm going to talk a little bit more about our mortgage advisor and like getting a mortgage so did we have a mortgage advisor how long did it take to get approved how did we know it, this was the right time to buy mortgage rates are very high yes we did use a mortgage advisor and she's my cousin well she's my cousin's fiance but she's my cousin and honestly she's great if you guys ever want a mortgage advisor you don't even have to be local because you can do a lot of it like via the phone um let me know and i'll give you her number because she's so good she's so personalized and not just with me because we're family with everyone i recommended her to ollie's brother i recommended her to mia and they've all used her and honestly everyone loves her she's the best so when you're approaching a bank they're only going to be able to offer you their like products whereas with with an advisor or like a broker they're gonna offer you like hundreds and you know there's going to be pros and cons for each of them and then they can sort of like pick and choose so you definitely have more option i would say with an advisor like that how did we know it was the right time we got our mortgage before the big spike and i do think they're slowly coming down from what like kate tells me our rate's not great probably is a little bit higher than it would have been a couple of years ago but it's also not like ridiculous even though the interest rates might have been a little bit higher than what we would have got had we brought like a couple of years back we like it, it's an okay amount for us to afford and also i don't think there's ever like a right time we personally just knew we needed a house <laughs> we needed to get out of our mom's house as much as we love them like we just don't have enough space we were ready for the next chapter the buying process length and why did the process take so long for us honestly it was nothing on our behalf 
we were told like when we so we viewed the house on something like the 10th of march 2023 and we got the keys on the 25th of january 2024 so it was all in all about 10 and a half months. No, actually, I'll go back. How long did it take to get your mortgage approved? Right, we went in for the first mortgage and it actually, it didn't get declined from us, but our mortgage did get declined on the house because they didn't feel that the valuation matched the state of the house and they just like weren't willing to take it on. So they actually declined it. And I think that was Virgin, I think. So then we were like, oh my God, okay. So we'd already put the offer and the offer had been accepted and you get like a bit of a grace period. Like it depends how serious the sellers are. Like if they're like, we want this house sold now, they might not wait. And if there's, you know, a lot of people bidding and things. But to be fair, the seller, he wanted us to have the house. So then we got another one and they just accepted it on the valuation. So it was really weird. So I would say like, don't feel disheartened because I felt really disheartened. And a lot of people like, in our family were like, you shouldn't get it then. Sometimes they can give you like a conditional offer. So they'll say like, yeah, we will be happy to take you on and we will lend you the money. But like you must get a survey. And we were probably, we were like sort of expecting that. We were anticipating it because we thought, well, the first mortgage lender has rejected us. So the second one would probably ask us to get the survey, but they didn't. They just accepted it with no conditions. So we were like, oh, like, so it definitely does. It depends on the surveyor as well. Like you don't know, like, have they been told like don't accept anymore this week like you just don't know it took us probably to get approved like a month all in all because obviously we had the the hiccup yeah the buying process length so essentially it took so long because we put the offer in we waited a little bit of time for that i got my i got my um solicitor on board essentially without going too much into it it's not really our story but the sellers were getting a divorce and one of the party were just like very uncooperative for quite a while for about three months they just kept refusing to sign the papers eventually i think after about three months they turned around and said one party's not happy with the price they're happy to sell but they're not happy with the price to sell at so i turned around and said well what what's her price like how much does she want us to go up like don't just say that like give us an idea and we'll see whether we can make that work and then the next day she just signed she didn't make us increase the price so it was very weird kept getting pushed back and pushed back purely on their side because the seller was having to move and it was a little bit complicated. I won't go into it because, again, it's not my story. But it's just a little bit complicated, like, securing their next house. So we were just basically, like, sat waiting tight. But we really wanted to get this house completed before Australia. Sorry, did that change your battery? So, yeah, where was I? So that's why the process took too, so long. Honestly, because it was just very complicated on the seller's behalf like we were just ready to go like obviously we were, we were no chain like the whole thing like we had no chain so we really should have been in within two months someone said did you have problems getting a mortgage after the buy to let no if anything it went in our favor um because it classes as like another income okay so our plans for the house short and long term we've got a two-year fixed mortgage so this is what we've always planned two-year fixed mortgage once that's up we would then remortgage the property obviously because we've put like money into it and we will have added value to the house we would then withdraw our equity and we would then put that onto our next house and then we would rent that house out where we can i would love to keep all of the houses we do so that's our sort of like long-term plan with it i guess but short term it's just going to be our first house for the next like couple years like it might be in two years we really want to move like especially if we do want kids at that point or whether we have them i don't know but like we probably will want to but it's also not a house that i can see us outgrowing super quick so it might be in two years we're like you know what let's wait here like let's stay here a little longer than we expected maybe going for another two-year fix and then revisit it because it is weird that like it's going to take us a good six months to get in there so then we'd only have like a year and a half living there i'm just trying to see if there's any more questions did you have a 10 percent deposit we put down oh i'm trying to work like 20 percent, which is a little bit of a higher deposit but it was a smaller valued house so put just to put that into perspective i think it was about a 20 percent deposit longest part of the process honestly waiting around what's the worst bit about buying the waiting around <laughs> to be honest i would say that like because it's so exciting you get really excited at the start because you're viewing it and then you decide to put the offer and there's a lot of adre a lot of adrenaline and then it sort of like plateaus and you're a bit like oh like we've got no house viewings going on and 
we're not like getting excited like i don't know it was a bit weird and because it dragged on so long for us we really lost a lot of like excitement and then it wasn't until we got the keys that we were a bit like oh my god like, we've actually got the keys it was a bit weird do you split the bills half and half or depending on income our bills we're just gonna put a certain amount a month into an account and all of our bills are going to come out of that that account and also we don't know how much our bills are going to be and especially at this point it's really i think i've got something in my eye like, it's really hard to tell because obviously we're not actually at the house so we don't know like what our average like bill is going to be for water for gas for electric like we just don't know it might swap and change like it might be that our bills aren't as much as we thought or maybe they're more we have to put a little bit more so i don't know i'll keep you guys updated with that as we get a little bit more like into it loads of people are saying like looking at house prices i feel like it's impossible i know like house prices are crazy and we were just speaking to a man who lives in our street he says oh i'm just staying there he's called dave i brought the house down there in something like 1972 and we were like oh no way and he's like yeah it only cost me 850 pound and i was like what and he's like yeah i had it in cash in my pocket and i just went and paid for it and i was like and i don't know what that compares to in today's money but i was just like it's so crazy it is really hard and we're definitely in a privileged position like i know we're so young we're 23 i would just say like look what you can take advantage of as first-time buyers like i know you get stamp duty um allowance like Thing. and you also like the help to buy ices so just look what's like there to take advantage of and i would just try and like help use that to help you like get to where you want to be but i'm nearly at the end of my coffee i feel like i answered pretty much everything if there's any other questions that you guys want put them below but i'm just i'm scrolling through and I think that's about everything. And I hope this video did help any first time buyers or if you just like want to buy a house soon or whatever it is. I hope this video gave you a bit of information, a bit of knowledge. Hopefully I shared some of the lessons that I've learned. Thank you guys so much for watching. That was nice to have a little different chat on here, you know. It was nice. So I'll keep you guys updated with everything. Obviously there's going to be a little mini break in the renovation property, all of that content while we go over to Australia. But as soon as we get back, it's just going to be the craziest like three four months however long it takes us to get in the house so i love you guys so much thank you for sticking around and i also have an instagram where i'm like documenting this whole journey i'll pop it here it's just jody my home if you guys are like want to get that reno fix then head over to my instagram page and you will get it from there but i love you guys so much thank you again for watching please subscribe if you don't already but i will see you with a huge weekly vlog in a couple of days love you guys bye